So you're gonna take your eight by 14 fabric and fold it in half long ways with the right side of the fabric facing in towards each other. And then you're gonna take some interfacing, um, which is um, should be non-woven polyester interfacing. Um, and you're gonna line it up with this edge here. And then what you're gonna do is um, you're gonna do a straight stitch up and down and um, secure all these together um, and leave about a fourth of an inch um, seam allowance. Okay, so I went ahead and stitched this edge together and I, um, it's your preference, but I went ahead and cut off some of the um, extra fabric on the edge. Then I'm gonna take this whole thing, flip it inside out and kind of shake everything so it's lined up. Make sure your lining is flat in there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and press the seam that I made here really quickly. And I'm doing this whole thing like really quickly and kind of haphazardly. Um, please don't judge my, <laughs> my skills here because my goal is to just make as many masks as quickly as possible. Okay, so I pressed everything out. <clears throat> Now what you're gonna do, and you can do this using a ruler at first if you'd like, and actually marking and pinning stuff. I've done it multiple times by now, so I kinda just have a feel for doing this by hand. Um, but what you're gonna do is you're gonna go from about one and a half inch from the bottom, and you're gonna take um, and go ahead and make a pleat. And your pleat should end up being about half an inch here. If you wanna take a look, you can see. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, the goal here is not perfection, it's just to be practical. So go ahead and you can do that right there and you can pin it if you want, but what I found is a lot easier is to just press it really quickly so it holds and you don't have to even worry about pinning. Then you're gonna go about half an inch above that line where you've made. You're gonna do the same thing. You'll make about half an inch pleat. And again, the first few times I did this, I pinned, um, or I actually used sewing clips for everything and then I just realized it's so much faster to just kind of do it by hand and, and press as you go. So press that one. And then we're gonna do the same thing one more time. Just gonna go a little bit above that. And kind of adjust. And again, it does not have to be perfect because when somebody is wearing this mask, what they're gonna be able to do with these pleats is pull them open and make it adjustable over their face the way they like it. Once you get that one, go ahead and press again. Not burn your fingers off. Okay. So then what I've got here is um, basically the base of the mask. It actually helps if you flip it over and just do one more really quick. Um, press to keep everything in place. Okay. So now that I've pressed everything, um, I'm not even going to have to worry about pinning or doing any of that. Um, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go ahead and baste um, the edges on both sides here. And I like to baste in this direction so that I'm not getting these creases caught in the machine. Um, so I'm going to do that and then I will check in with you for the next step. Okay, so I've basted my edges here. Um, and again, please don't judge me. My workstation is a mess and I'm not going for perfection. This is not like a perfectly tailored piece of clothing or something. This is a mask um, that's pretty generic and people can adjust. So I'm just getting as many done as quickly as possible, which is my goal. Um, so here's the mask base. And then I have bias tape. I have I have a ton at home, so I'm just using what I have around home. Um, the bias tape thing, um, you if you don't have bias tape, you can also just use um, fabric strips. You can sew your own. Um, you can uh, kind of fold it over and encase the edges, or if you want to use just like craft ribbon, you can use that. And then frankly, like the edging is kind of an optional step. It just makes the mask look and feel better for the wearer, but frankly, in these times, I mean, whatever you have is gonna be fine. Um, if you can't finish the edges with something like this, it's fine. Um, here's the base and then um, bias tape, and then these are my gonna be my elastic bands. Um, what I'm using here is a nice, really soft, comfortable ooh, polyester cord. 
Um, I actually found this at Michael's and I had a really hard time finding any other, I was going to use braided elastic, um, like fourth inch, but I couldn't find any and I think it's out because everybody's trying to make masks right now. So I was really lucky I happened to find these at Michael's. Um, they're sold in sets uh, and I can link that product or show you a picture. Um, I cut these in about seven inch strips, um, which seems to be kind of the perfect generic size for most people. Um, if you don't have any elastic banding that you can use for straps, you can also do this whole mask, except you can create um, ties for the wearer. So if you're going to create ties, um, you know, they probably need to be about 15 inches on either edge um, coming out from either side so that the person has plenty of bandwidth for tying and everything like that. But um, I'm going to show you my technique using the elastic. So the next step you're going to take is you're going to um, end up uh, sewing. Um, you're going to end up sewing everything on here, but I'm just showing you how it's laid out so you can get it set up. The best thing to do is get it set up on your machine and then line everything up. But um, basically you want to have... Uh, you want to have each edge of um, the cording lined up just about like that, so it's right on the edge, um, and you want to have it facing into the middle of the mask, um, and you're just going to go ahead and uh, get some stitching down. I found, and it's hard to do with one hand, but I found it's easiest to put my foot down over, right over the piping, and then kind of go back and forth over it so that it doesn't wiggle too much. Um, you'll just have to mess around with your piping and your machine to get it down, but you're going to attach um, the banding on either side just like this. Okay, so my lovely assistant here is holding the camera um, so I can show you what I do. So I'm going to go ahead and put the foot right over the cording so it holds it in place. And then I'm just going to kind of get my needle in there so that it's in place. I'm going to back up a little bit, get it secure. This just took some playing around for me to figure out the best way. And then I'm gonna move up to basting. Just gonna run down here really quick. Okay, so now that we're down at this end. Okay, so I got down to the other side. I'm gonna lift up my foot again, put that cording right underneath it. I don't know if you can see that. And then I'm gonna push the foot right down on top of the cording. So it's holding in place. Put the needle in there. And then Kind of just move back and forth. I'm gonna go ahead and flip the whole thing around, go back over it. It's just gonna get them uh, cording nice and secure on there. And then go back a couple times and secure it. Okay, so I've got both cords attached here. And then I went ahead and used scissors and trimmed off um, a bunch of the edging so it's just cleaner. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is take some my bias tape and again this could just be ribbon or a strip of fabric or whatever um, and I'm gonna go ahead and put it over this and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold over the edge here um, and then what I'm, I'm gonna end up doing is stitching down this inner side here to attach it to the base of the mask and then once I get stitched all the way down I'm gonna fold this end over too. I'm gonna trim off some of the end so it's just a little bit over and then I'm gonna fold, when I get to the end, I'm gonna fold this over and then finish stitching. So I'll show you what it looks like when I'm all done. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys what I'm doing. It's a little hard, but I'm gonna fold over that edge just like that. And I'm doing this with a pretty uh, wide stitch because it's just easier to maneuver. And we're gonna secure everything down so it really can be more like basting. Go ahead and get that first part secured. And then when we get to this side, I'm gonna go ahead and fold this end under so it's nice and tucked in. And then finish. Again, I'm not going for perfection here. And I'm gonna go ahead and flip it around and kind of just go back, go back over everything. So it's nice and secure. Okay, so I um, have stitched um, this bias tape down, just kind of basted it sloppily so it's on there. Um, and I'm using bright uh, thread contrasting so that you can see what I've done. 
So it's gonna look like this on the back, not very pretty, but eventually we're gonna make this look nice and finished. Um, and again, all this finishing stuff is, it's not really necessary, it's just, it makes the mask look a lot nicer and it's a little more comfortable for the wear. Okay, so I've got that um, edge here. I went ahead and trimmed off a little bit with my scissors because I just think it makes it easier to work with. Then what you're gonna end up doing, it should look like this. You're gonna end up taking this entire side and flipping it over like that. So what you're gonna end up with is when you get all the stitch down, it's gonna be a nice finished edge on one side and then it's gonna look like this on this side so that the elastic bands are sticking out. So what I'm gonna do is fold all this down and then I'm gonna go ahead and put stitching in on this inner corner here. Just takes a little bit of maneuvering. I think the first few times I did it, I was really messy and awkward and then I just got more used to it over time. So it, for me, it helps to start actually in the middle so I can get the presser foot down over everything to secure it and then I'll just go back over everything, so. And I'm just backtracking. stitches in there and make sure you're secure. Okay, and then I'm gonna take everything out. Turn. So after all that, this is what you're gonna end up with. Um, again, I'm gonna take off some of the excess thread that's hanging off, um, but you're just gonna end up with this finished, finished edge here with the bias tape, and then this is what the other side's gonna look like. So I'm just gonna repeat the whole process on the other side. All right, so I basically just repeated the same thing on the other side. Um, so now I have the two finished edges here with the bias tape, and then this is what the other side looks like. So obviously the wearer is going to loop these over their ears, and then um, the pleats allow it to be adjustable so they can pull it down over their mouth and then up over their nose comfortably. Um, again, I know elastic is in kind of um, short supply right now, so if you can't get elastic, uh, that's fine. You can also use... Um, bias tape or um, ribbon or even strips of fabric, whatever you'd like, um, to create ties. And from what I've seen on other patterns, I think giving at least about 15 to 18 inches per tie, um, one coming from each corner here, so four, um, is going to give the wearer enough leeway to tie. 